Hello everyone, I'm Kimberly from Dirt Floor Fibers and I'm here with April's Fiber of the Month Club package. This is a subscription that I get from Paradise Fibers every month that comes filled with all kinds of fiber and fiber related goodies. So I've been getting this package for a while and I don't get any sort of commission off of this or anything, uh, but I do highly recommend it to any level of spinner, whether you're just getting started or you've been spinning for decades. Uh, so I always get really, really excited. It's like having Christmas every month uh, when this comes in the mail. Now this month's spoilers talked about emerging from the bag speckled in happiness. And it did give the clue that it was going to be undyed fiber. So I'm really hoping that included in the package, we're going to get uh, some suggestions for a fun new dyeing technique as well. Uh, so I always love seeing the new, the new patterns and techniques that they send along with the fiber. I love the package that's coming. It's this really great uh, kind of spring themed package. I'm not really a scrapbooker, but I kind of want this on scrapbook paper. And as I was picking it up from the post office, I noticed down in the corner, there's some sort of kind of squishy round ball. So I'm wondering if there's maybe a pom-pom or something inside the package this month, but I'm really excited to dive in and find out what it is. So let's go ahead and open up and see what Paradise Fibers has sent us this month. You know, every month I say that I'm gonna bring scissors out Still haven't brought scissors, but this month actually I have my pocket knife with me. So, right, the first thing I notice when I open up my bag is we have another one of these organza bags holding the fiber. They do send these every single month, and I have a nice little collection of them now. But I've got to say, I absolutely love them for storing fiber. Uh, you know, a lot of times I'll be working on a spinning project, and I'll want to have my fiber separated by weights. And so I can actually stop and... Um, put together a bunch of uh, prepared fiber inside these bags and it holds them really well. Nothing really like sticks to the inside. I've also been using it for um, hand combing some um, Lester long wool that I've been working on and all of my prepared locks I've been putting inside one of these bags. So even though we get a new one every month, um, I found that I've found ways to use them around the house. They're really not going to waste. So as much, oh, it's a really pretty color. It is a natural color. I was expecting, when they said undyed, I was expecting like kind of the natural ivy sort, or not ivy, ivory sort of color, but this is a little bit more of a brown. Um, I'm not gonna open it yet because I wanna go in and see what the cards tell us about it before I do that. So it looks like this box is called Sweet Speckles. And in my bag, it tells me I'm going to find the Downy Downpour Blend, uh, introducing the newest blend to make its way to our cloud-inspired collection of undyed blends, a match that delicately displays a subtle luster with superior staple length and a lightweight woolly texture. This lofty and lightweight comb top consists of 85% mixed natural shades of blue face luster wool and 15% wild Tussa silk top. We named this naturally cloudy gray blend Downy Downpour because it is reminiscent of a rainy spring day in the form of soft fluff. I do apologize for the background noise. Somebody is doing some serious construction down the street. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon, but that's okay. Uh, you'll love how effortly it spins and dies. Oh my goodness, I think we are getting Kool-Aid in our package as well. Uh, Bunny Notions Bag. Indulge in a festive variety of sweet offerings this month and try your hand at speckled dyeing fiber and yarn with Kool-Aid. See the other card for the instructions. In your bag, you'll find two random colors of Kool-Aid to dye with, a sweet candy stitch marker slash progress keeper, a sunny orange ginger stash tea, also known as liquid sunshine, a fluffy faux fur rainbow pom-pom. I knew there was a pom-pom in there. An iconic marshmallow holiday version of Eunice as a yellow sheep peep. It also has a reminder on the card as well that you do get 10% off on unspun fiber at uh, Paradise Fibers if you use the club code. So for as much stuff as I order from them, that 10% off is always really nice unless they're having another sale. So let's go ahead and before we take a look at how they want me to die, Let's take a look at what else we can find inside of our bag. 
So let's take a look at this fiber, get it opened up. I am a big fan of blue face luster. And sometimes it can feel not rough. It is a really nice fiber next to skin soft. But blended with just that little bit of silk has made it really, really nice. Now, one of the things that I always enjoy about the fiber's from Paradise Fibers, and I think I, I came up if I already said it, I don't get any sort of commission from them, I just really enjoy their products, is that their fibers are always really, really well prepared. The top is super easy to spin. Um, I've never had a problem with any of their fibers being too felted or anything like that. So I don't know, I'll put a picture up as well, but it's just this really beautiful kind of heathered gray tan sort of color. Um, and it's super, super soft and super pretty. I believe there's eight ounces of that, if that's what I, if I'm remembering correctly. So it says, Blue Face Luster is a British long wool that has subtle luster similar to that of mohair. Originally hailing from the Tyne and Ware Valleys, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, uh, in the hills of East Cumbria, Cumbria, the breed was developed in the 1700s by Robert Bakewell by crossing Lincoln long wool with Dishley Luster. The resulting breed was commonly known as the Hexham Lester due to its early concentration in the north of England. It wasn't until 1963 that the BFL we know and love today came about through selective breeding to maintain the purity of sheep. This fine long wool is dense with beautiful luster and is well suited for spinning due to its long staple length of 3 to 6 inches. These curly haired and hardy sheep have one of the softest fleeces in the United Kingdom at an average of 26 microns. This lovely wool is perfect for hand spinning, felting, and many other craft uses. We've blended a natural white and brown BFL with wild Tussa silk in order to create the lofty, strong, and lustrous blend we've named Downy Downpour. More of this fiber is available by special order for Fiber Club members only until the end of the month, after which it will be live on our website for all. Simply give us a call or email us to order. So if you're not a subscriber, Look out for this at Paradise Fibers uh, on their website at the end of the month. All right, dyeing with Kool-Aid. Let's go back in the bag and see what else they've given us. Ah, this is so cute. I feel like a little kid getting an Easter basket. Um, they put it in this really cute bunny bag, and the ears are the handles at the top. How adorable. I'm five again. Here is... <laughs> This is perfect to go along with Kool-Aid for a dye. Look at how technicolor that is. That is super cute as a pom-pom. And we also have our sheep sticker. This time it looks like a little peep. We have our tea as usual and our Kool-Aid. So our colors that we're going to be using, mango and pink lemonade. So that's going to be fun. Although, oh, it is. So one thing to watch out for when you are dying with Kool-Aid is you have got to make sure it is the unsweetened Kool-Aid. There's two kinds, one with sugar in it already and one without sugar. If you use the kind with the sugar, I have heard that you end up with a really, really super sticky horrible mess. And I just double checked, these are indeed the unsweetened. So if you go to do Kool-Aid dyeing yourself, please, please, please make sure you use the unsweetened. That was a PSA. And then of course our stitch marker, which I'm always losing stitch markers, so I'm always glad to get these in every month. And it looks like a little candy, it says sweet on it. And it's just a nice little stitch marker. All right, on to our instructions for dyeing. And I've actually never dyed with Kool-Aid before. I've done it a couple times with um, with food coloring, but I never get the kind of deeper earthy tones that I'm interested in. They're all very light and fluffy. Um, so I was never a big fan, but I'm willing to give Kool-Aid a try, especially when paired with um, a fiber that's not white or cream. Um, I think it'll help make it a little less technicolor. So it says, a quick and easy dye project that's fun for the whole family. Dyeing with Kool-Aid can be done in a few hours with minimal supplies and cleanup. So the supplies you'll need, Kool-Aid, 
uh, five packs should fully saturate four ounces of roving when over dyeing. Two packs or more is enough to speckle dye. So we got two packs, so I'm assuming speckle dyeing is what we're going to go for. Gloves and vinegar are optional. Um, the re so a lot of dyes are set with an acid, acid-based dyes. Uh, a lot, some of the more popular acids to set them with are white vinegar, because everybody has that, or it's really cheap to buy at the store. That's what I set all of my uh, professional dyes with, their acid dyes. However, um, Kool-Aid naturally has a lot of citric acid in it, which is another acid that you can use to set your dye. So that's why they say vinegar is optional. You can use vinegar if you just want to be on the safe side, but usually there's enough citric acid inside of the Kool-Aid that it'll set your dye really nicely. Uh, little bowls or a plate, water, plastic wrap. I usually try to avoid anything that requires plastic wrap in the dyeing process just because I don't like all that extra wa uh, waste. However, it does help keep all of your color in place so it doesn't bleed on parts of the wool that you don't want it to. A uh, microwave or a steamer. I've used microwave before. It does work out well. You do have to be really careful to make sure your wool doesn't dry out because uh, you don't want to burn anything in your microwave. And you want to do it in short bursts as well so it doesn't get too hot. Uh, now I usually use a steamer. Uh, all of my dyeing equipment is dedicated just to dyeing. Once I've dyed fiber in it, I don't use it for food anymore. When you're working with Kool-Aid or with um, uh, food coloring, those are food safe. So it is okay to use something that you are going to um, use for food again. However, I just find it to be a really good practice to have dedicated dye equipment, especially if you're going to be dyeing on a regular basis. And then something to apply the dye with, toothbrush, toothpicks, cotton swabs, I think kind of sky's the limit there. Mordant bath. Fill a basin with lukewarm water, add in a quarter cup of vinegar per four ounces of fiber. Gently place fiber in the water and push it down until thoroughly saturated. Let soak for 20 minutes. So because you are working with some warm water, you want to be really careful that you don't agitate the fibers. Uh, you don't want anything to felt before you've gotten a chance to even spin it up. Uh, carefully remove fiber and place on a towel. Fold the towel over to cover the fiber and press down. Leave fiber damp as we'll be microwaving to set the dye. Uh, dry fiber can, can burn in the microwave. Very important. So dyeing. Pour Kool-Aid powders into their own bowls and mix with a teaspoon of water to make a paste. Add more water as needed. Place your fiber on plastic wrap and your, use your choice of tools to apply Kool-Aid paste to the fiber. Speckle the paste all over the surface area, alternating colors. Flip the fiber over and speckle the other side. The more water that is in the fiber, the bigger your speckles will be as the dye will disperse. Cover your fiber with plastic wrap and place in the microwave for two minutes to set the dye. Carefully remove the fiber. Contents will be hot, and it does take forever to cool down, so watch yourself there, and let cool. Uh, remove from plastic wrap and wash with cold water until the water runs clear. Let air dry. Visit our blog for more detailed tutorial, tutor, I can never say it, how to, um, and watch us speckle dye with fiber in your bag in its unspun and spun form. So that's at blog.paradisefibers.com to find that. Um, so I suppose you could also wait until you've spun it up and do it that way as well. But I'm really interested, and I'll put a picture up. They've got this picture of a uh, speckled dyed roving, and then when they've spun it up, you just get these little pops of color in with the natural colored um, fibers. And so I've been actually thinking about experimenting with just uh, you know, spinning with my natural color and then taking a really bright pop of color and just letting that kind of suck into the fiber uh, that I'm spinning every once in a while to create random pops of color. And I think this will be a really great start to figuring out how to work with that. So it looks like that is it for this month's subscription. And so instead of spinning this up first, I might actually jump in and dye it. And if I do, I'll make sure I put, I add to the video my pictures and my instructions on how I did that. All right, I'll see you later. Oh, and don't forget, also follow me on Instagram at dirt fibers and check out my new online store at dirt That'll be coming up shortly. I know I've said it every month since January, but I promise by the end of this month, we are getting that in place. So I'll see you later.
with a how-to on dyeing this up.